Hey, Hari. How are you doing? Doing well. How are you? Good. Um, thanks for taking time out to uh, show us some of the geospatial capabilities of uh, Kinetica. Oh, you bet. Um, do you want to quickly tell us, maybe set the stage for what you're going to be demoing today? Yeah, um, I figured today we would start off with just kind of an introduction to some of the geospatial features in Kinetica. Um, basically, today we've started with um, some some point data. Uh, it's it's from the famous you know uh, New York City taxi data set that um, that is so popular to use. Um, we've got about 11 million records from that data set loaded into Kinetica. Um, and then yeah, like I, I figured I'd show you some of the visualization options you have, um, how the queries work, and how fast they return, and then maybe even play around with some streaming data today. So how's that sound? That sounds great. Awesome. Um, should we jump straight in to, to Workbench? That sounds great. Yeah. So right right here, I've got Workbench uh, up. This is the landing page of Workbench. And on my left, uh, you can see I've got a table here called Taxi Data Historical. Um, this is the table that we've loaded all of our taxi data into. And as you can see, we've got almost 11 million records in that table um, to start. Um, the other thing, so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into a workbook. I've got a workbook started here uh, called Taxi Demo. Um, and I, I wanted to show you a couple things. We'll get to these queries in just a second, but the first thing I want to do uh, is let's just look at the data. Um, this is one of the coolest things in Kinetica. Because we can take advantage of the GPU, we can render uh, 11 you know, million point tables instantly um, server side. Mm. And so yeah, let me just show you how easy it is to set this up. If I go in here to uh, schema and I pick my table name, it'll figure out where my lat long columns are. We're going to look at pickups. Um, Let's pick raster for our rendering mode. That's gonna show each point individually in this pink color. Push update and boom. So that's nice. 11 million points rendered live out of our table. And by live, I mean that each time I pan and zoom, we request a new image from Kinetica. And these aren't cached whatsoever. If you had streaming data coming in, you would see that streaming data populating in these images on every pan and zoom. Um, so this is one of those things that's amazing because if you have 11 million points and you just want to get a sense of your data to make sure it's in the right region, make sure that there aren't, you know, like tons of noise and there's not you know, a bunch of anomalies in it, um, you can just throw it on a map and see that instantly, right? This is something you really yeah. can't do in like PostGIS, even QGIS. This is a lot of data to render, um, you know, normally. So having the server take care of it, do the server side and use the GPU is, is kind of an amazing thing. And I'm just, you know, checking this out through a web browser, right? Uh, but I, but yeah. I get this massive scale. Um, another cool thing I can do awesome is, uh, you know, I can also look at this in a heat map. So I can see not only, you know, just all of these points, but I can actually get a sense of, um, you know, where the density of these points occurs, right? Because when you look at that, that many points, you can have a lot of overlap, right? And so the heat map view, uh, you know, shows us that most of these, as you would expect, um, yeah. most of the heat here is actually coming on the roadways themselves, right? But it's kind of cool. Yeah, um, yeah. So, so, so we can look at that much data, but you can't really you can't really intuit much from looking at 11 million points on a map outside of just you know a quick gut check, right? So the first thing yeah. you might be interested in doing if you wanted to dig into this data set and understand it, at least visually, um, you may want to bin this data um, to like a grid of polygons, right? Of whatever size you choose. Um, that would allow you to see patterns geographically of what's happening. Maybe it's the count of pickups, maybe it's the average fare you know, for one specific uh, geography. Um, so yeah. that's something that Kinetica handles like nothing <laughs> it's kind of amazing so yeah. if it, it, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna run these two queries back to back and in the first one what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an h3 index on our latitude and longitude this is similar to a geo hash if you're familiar but it's using uber's h3 library under the hood um mm -hmm. this this kind of query runs in like you know 0 0.08 seconds on 11 million points um and from that in this second query uh what i'm gonna run is it's a group by i mean i'm gonna generate some aggregates here. Um, the, the minimum yeah. fare, the average fare, the maximum fare, and the count. Um, and, so and you're, you're essentially grouping the data into that, into those, um, the hexagonal or whatever grid. Exactly. The, the data structure that you created in the previous chunk. Exactly. Yeah, yeah you, you've got these polygons um, and it's going to count the number of pickups, you know, per polygon. And then it's going to enrich that polygon data, you know, w with the aggregates that I'm asking for here. Um, when I run this, it takes, less than a second it's this is half a second and, and that just did the entire data set um and what's so awesome. cool about this is now i can put this on a map and i can visualize this this grid of polygons and i can see all of these trends um i can see all these trends on a map okay so we're going to choose the class break and, and what the class break rendering does is it allows you to pick a column which you're interested in let's start with maybe average fare um i'm going to choose equal interval 
which will just distribute you know values across um, the range of values that we have. It'll distribute classes across the range of values that we have. And I'm gonna just, let's pull out some of the outliers here. Let's just say the max value is 200. Um, the color yeah. map is gonna go from blue to red. And let's push update and see what we get. All right, let's zoom into that area. One second. Find where I'm going. Okay. Um, all right. So as you can see, lots of colors mm. on the map. This is good. Um, you'll see that the lowest, uh, you know, the lowest values are kind of on Manhattan proper. But then, you know, as yeah. you venture out toward New Jersey, uh, you're going to get a lot more variation out here. And I think that makes sense, right? Mm. Like a lot of people on Manhattan will be taking trips, you know, short trips, you know, a few blocks yeah. or uptown, downtown, or you know, whatever. Um, but if you're coming from New Jersey and you're going into the city, fair price is obviously going to be, you know. Uh, it's it's a lot more. There's a little traffic getting into the city. There's traffic getting out. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of this is kind of in line with what we expect to see. But it's it's also interesting that there are these lines probably following certain roads of average, like higher average fares, like in Brooklyn, right? Um, oh yeah, that's like that road. Yeah, I wonder that what that is. Maybe airports, um, like airport pick up drop up along the metro line, right? Oh yeah, that's a really good point. I I would I would maybe I don't know. Right. Yeah, it's interesting. That's something. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you will notice uh, you will notice that there are spikes around uh, um, you know really busy transportation areas. So like Penn Station or Grand Central Station, you'll see you mm -hmm. know a bright red uh, polygon um, you know surrounded by a lot of blue, and that's usually why. Um, let's yeah. See if I, if I can find that for you, we may have to look at this in a different view for me to show you that particular one. Um, right, but like if you look at the the count, for example, let's look at the count instead using the same. Uh, the same kind of class break. Uh, all right, let's do that. Let's take a look here. I'll zoom in. Ah, uh, it looks like we have some outliers that we need to rule out here. So let's let's do hmm, let's 10, take this down to ten thousand. Yep, I think that's a good idea. And update. Oh, I should have set my viewport. I'm probably scrolling again here. Oh yeah, how do you set the viewport? Ah, it's actually pretty easy. Um, I'll do that. I'll do that again. I think we get we have we still have some outliers here that I oh. need to rule out. Sorry for the uh, screen jumping here. Um, yeah. So if I wanted to kind of set this as my main viewport, I can definitely do that. Uh, let's set the max value to uh, let's just do a thousand here for the count. Um, and then if I come down here and say set the current map viewport, that'll fill that in. And when I push mm. update, uh, here we go. Nice. All right, so as you can see, um, we're eliminating a lot of the geometry here that's in kind of like the heart of Manhattan. Um, that's where most of the pickups are going to be. Oh, because we set the threshold to be 1,000, right? That's Right, yeah. Um, so let's actually bump that back up. Let's do like 8,000. And then I'll use my current viewport so we can kind of keep this perspective here. There we go. So it's now, it's now starting mm, nice. to fill it back in, um, and you're really able to start, you know, kind of understanding now these trends right fewer fewer on the uh, edges of manhattan more kind of in the core of manhattan so anyway yeah. i mean th this is just an example of how interactive this kind of um data exploration especially geospatial data expo exploration can be in Connecticut. um if you try to do this with other you know client-side tools you certainly can't do you know 10 million points you know using web yeah. you know javascript right in, in a web browser there's just no way to do that um and it gets really heavy doing this kind of stuff in something like qgis where you know it's just not yeah. meant to handle that scale of data whereas Connecticut's purpose built for that the other thing i want to show you hari is uh, streaming data so if i jump over here uh, to my second sheet um i'm going to run this query which creates a data source a streaming data source on a kafka queue that we have set up it's actually going to stream uh, new york city taxi events synthetic ones um into, the, into our Connecticut instance here um this second query here this is actually going to start the data load uh, coming in mm. so if i go back over to my data tab and i refresh I should now have a taxi data streaming table. And if I click on the information, it's gonna take a second to get that uh, queue going, but we will see these records start to jump uh, up. In anticipation of that, what I'm gonna do is create a map and we're gonna look at a map of streaming data. So I'll come down here, create a new map block, click configure. We're gonna create this on our new streaming table. We'll use latitude longitude. Um, let's do it as, yeah, let's do it as a heat map because that actually might be changing quite a bit. Um, we'll update. All right, we may not have any data yet, but I'm gonna zoom in here and I'm gonna get the viewport ready. Oh, here we go. Looks like we have started started seeing some data coming here. Uh, one thing I wanna do is I want to, aside from setting my current viewport, 
is let's bump up the blur radius substantially here too because that's going to let us kind of see um you know mm. these things change over time and so right now you know about a thousand records a second are streaming into kinetica um and we're able to just view that on a map so every time i refresh this we're seeing you know a live picture of brand new data right um yeah. we could take this we could create a materialized view and we could look at the last 10 minutes we could look at the last hour yeah. for example uh, we could also blend it we could create a join view where you're looking at a join of our historical table and the stream that, uh, that that's coming in and then you're viewing that on a map as well and all of this is going to be done in real time those joins happen almost instantaneously uh, and then you can visualize them on a map so anyway that's awesome and yeah so this uh, the reason that you wanted i guess you didn't want to join to the uh, or add it to the historical table is probably because it's so big that it doesn't show up right the stream exactly right so yeah i, I kind of uh, want to okay. i kind of want to show you what it looks like with real fluctuating data but when you only got a thousand records a second coming in on top of 11 it's million gonna it's going to be yeah. pretty diluted right um and so you yeah. kind of lose the effect for the demo but yeah you can absolutely do that um, and then you could actually use that to to run other analytics on that right maybe the output's not yeah. a map maybe you're actually uh, wanting to publish this back out to a, a kafka topic um so that you can pull it in you know and, and report on it um, or you can alert on it um those are things that kinetica you know, can do, do really well Cool. So this is really, really awesome. So maybe we can dwell a bit more on um, how maybe Kinetica's geospatial capabilities are slightly different from, say, some of the other vendors out there and what we offer. You bet. Um, which yeah. make it special. Yeah. Um, so we have a, a large list of um, ST underscore functions, spatial type functions. Um, it's kind of like if, if you've used PostGIS, um, our list of geospatial functions is very similar. We have like 100 plus uh, functions in our library um, and they let you do all sorts of things, right? Like you can, um, you, you can of course do things like filtering, uh, but you can do more special things like um, measuring the area of a, of a polygon or taking the convex hull, you know, out, uh, outside of a, um, a, a point table, right? Uh, to see kind of where yeah. the boundaries are to that. Um, you can do calculations, you can do joins, uh, you can do geo joins, uh, which is kind of like what we, we showed you uh, earlier. Uh, where, where you are saying, you know, join this table with that table where the points intersect with polygons. Um, you can do all sorts of boundary yeah. checking. I mean, yeah, the list goes on and on, but uh, Kinetica, Kinetica is very robust um, in terms of its geospatial um, you know, functionality. And on top of that, we have a bundled graph server um, in our product, yeah. right? So you can actually take uh, road network data that you know might be in a CSV. You can take that ingest it into Kinetica, build a graph from it, and then you can actually do like routing on it as well. So not only do you have this wealth of geospatial functions, but you also have pathfinding functions you can run too. It's all happening um, on one platform and you can visualize it too uh, using the same uh, workbook and map uh, combo that I was showing you earlier. Awesome. Um, yeah, this is really cool, Matt. Um, thanks for taking time out to set this up and also demo it for us. You bet, my pleasure. Thanks, Ari. Thanks for having me.